And that you are representing the World Farmers Organization also in the context of climate change policy and more specifically within the UNFCCC process. What are the main issues that farmers and in particular smallholders are faced with in this context? In the climate change negotiations, farmers work together in, in the farmers' constituency um, and as part of my job with the World Farmers Organization, I'm also the focal point for the farmers' constituency, uh, working with all kinds of farmers, just uh, all the way from, from small-scale to large-scale farmers and from organic to conventional farmers. So we basically represent all types of farming and agriculture. Um, and, and my role is to facilitate uh, and support representation of farmers uh, and farmers' organization in the clim climate change negotiations. Um, and this means that, that our focus is global and it must include all, it include all perspectives. Um, and I think that, that our history of working well together across countries and, um, and smallholder, large scale, et cetera, and providing substantial input to the negotiation shows that we have a lot in common, in common and that we have many shared goals. Um, so one of our main objectives in the climate change negotiations is to raise the awareness of farmers uh, and the importance of agriculture in the negotiations and in the climate change context, um, and to show that farmers can deliver on many things, including food security, poverty eradication, development, and of course, most important for the process, uh, on climate change adaptation and mitigation. Um, and we also urge parties uh, and the countries, the country negotiators, to engage with the farmers' organizations and the farmers' constituency to, to identify adaptation and mitigation actions and, and also to see how this can be realized on the ground. Um, and our primary goal is to have uh, a work program on agriculture adopted as we feel that this is actually necessary before we have further discussions on, how to, on, on including agriculture in the wider framework. Um, and, and when I say a work program on agriculture, what I mean is that, that we would like to see more research and more science on agriculture and, and farming and how this can be included in the process, what we can do in terms of adaptation and mitigation, and for example, how to measure both adaptation and mitigation efforts. Can you maybe explain what's the work program? Why is it important? Well, it's important because it would bring more knowledge about agriculture into the process because this is, this is a, a subject that we don't have much knowledge about as it is now. Um, and especially one of the things that are difficult is how do we measure emissions from agriculture and what, uh, what actions would actually work, what is working on the ground. And also, um, and this is one of the most important issues for us, is, is that there will be uh, co-benefits between adaptation and mitigation, and we need to to address that before, for mm -hmm. example, if we if we're looking at uh, at a new legally binding agreement that will um, be adopted uh, in in 2015, if we include agriculture as one of the sectors to focus on, I don't think we have enough enough knowledge to do that as it is now. Look into the media as a normal person. I hear quite a lot about agriculture being a uh, within the climate change discussion. So why is it that the UNFCCC, is, if I read you correctly, is not really recognizing the role of agriculture to the degree that you think should be the case? We're not really looking at specific sectors yet. So it, it would also be new if we include a specific sectors and set goals for, for sectors as such. Um, and this is why I think that a work program on agriculture is important to get more science. And yes, there is a lot about agriculture and climate change in the media as farmers are the most, hard, they're hardest hit by climate change and, and they desperately need to adapt to climate change, especially in, in developing countries and especially smallholder farmers. Um, and also uh, the agriculture sector is one of the sectors that contribute quite a lot or quite substantially to uh, mitigate or to um, greenhouse gas emissions, which is why we should also address the mitigation issue and, and how to mitigate and at the, si at the same time make sure that we have food security and, and produce enough food. Let's look at the current state of the negotiations right now. What would you say is the single most important thing that would have to happen right now? Well, 
what is the most important thing that hasn't happened so far in this process, also quite an important point, it seems. And at COP17 in 2011 in Durban, actually for the first time the COP had a decision on including agriculture or that, that's, that we should discuss agriculture, uh, which was done last year in, at the session in, in Bonn uh, in May. And, and our hope was that that could lead to a COP decision on actually having a work program on agriculture so that we could get more knowledge and more science on, on this sector. Um, but that didn't happen and uh, there was actually no decision on agriculture at, at COP18 last year. So uh, on the positive side, that even though we didn't get a COP decision on agriculture, the discussions continue uh, on agriculture, which I think is, is very positive, um, but it seems like the main issue for getting uh, a decision is that some parties would prefer to have a work program only on adaptation, while other parties would like to have both adaptation and mitigation included. Um, and for farmers, it is quite important to have both adaptation and mitigation included in a work program, as, as we see that there are both, there can be both conflicts and, and also to a high degree co-benefits. And actually as one of our members of the World Farmers Organization say that a farmer doesn't wake up one morning and decides to go out and do adaptation and then wakes up the next morning and decides to go out and do mitigation. That's not how it works. Looking ahead at COP19 now in Warsaw in, in November of this year, um, looking at the, where the process is going maybe a little bit, do you think that these two issues are going to merge? and? It, if that would be the case, would there be a, a stronger representation of the agriculture and smallholder issues expected? Uh, I don't think it's realistic to hope for a COP decision on agriculture this year either. Um, there is an upcoming meeting in Bonn that starts next week where agriculture will once again be discussed. And, and I think that we need to wait to, and see what happens at that meeting before we can say anything about what would happen at the COP. But, um, Realistically, for me, I'm not sure that there will be a COP decision on agriculture again and that these issues will actually merge and, and make leeway for a, an actual decision. Um, but what I am most certainly hoping for and what I think will happen is that there will continue to be a focus on agriculture and discussions on agriculture will also continue in the process. So, so it's not out yet. It's still very much alive in the process. We've seen this for quite some time now. What do you think will be the consequence of never being a, a work program or the low status of agriculture continues within the process? What will be the consequence? What do you think? Well, my biggest fear is that without a work program, we don't have sufficient knowledge to actually include agriculture in, in a legally binding decision. But maybe that will happen anyway. And then we're, we're left with uh, having maybe targets to live up to, but but not the tools to actually get there, um, and I think that that is a big fear from the from the farmers community. And and also, if we don't get a work program, and farmers have a lot of knowledge that we can share. And I think that by getting a work program, we would be able to see what is out there, what science and knowledge is out there on agriculture, and what is missing, and maybe what what are the experiences on the ground, what are some of the local knowledge that could also be shared and that could be important in this process. And I, I think that we need to go through that before actually including agriculture mm. in, in a, an agreement. Could you sketch out an example for a, a smallholder farmer or somewhere in Africa, if uh, what would be the consequences in the long term for this? Or is it going too far? Well, what I would say is that, that this is something that would there would be consequences for the agriculture sector as a whole, but as it as it looks right now, and as I think you also know from your from your own organization, is that there's actually a lot going on on the ground. And I think that what smallholder farmers in in developing countries are looking at is to get support from donors to actually go out and do adaptation and and mitigation mm -hmm. efforts in on the ground already, because farmers can't wait for a COP decision, but there will be difficulties if there is target set in the sector without having the proper knowledge. Yeah, you touched already now the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Um, how could the members of the platform be of help to 
the farmer's constituency or promoting issues on the, uh, in the process of the UNFCCC. As I see it, the Global Donor Platform and the Farmers Constituency have, uh, we have a lot of the same um, objectives and, and, and I think that we see that the same issues are important for farmers. Um, and I think this is important as it signifies that farmers and, and the donors working on the ground and organizations working on the ground uh, have convergent views on what farmers need and what is needed for the agriculture sector. And also as farmers increasingly have to look out uh, look outside the UN processes to get support to actually do what is needed on the ground now. Uh, support from members of the global donor platform is, is also very important for us. And early action is crucial for the agriculture sector as it is, as I have said, one of the most vulnerable to climate change. Um, and at the same time, farmers uh, are part of the solution as, as one of the only sectors that can actually sequester carbon. So, so I think that a strong network of, of donors and, and a coordinated and improved effort to maximize uh, impact on the ground is also very important for us. And, and furthermore, that the current focus uh, on the triple wins of adaptation, mitigation, uh, development, and food security that, that agriculture can actually deliver uh, should very much be continued. Any particular uh, action in concrete terms that you would like to the members or the, the donors to consider or maybe to discontinue certain practices that you find uh, counterproductive maybe? I think that what the platform does that is very positive is that uh, many of your members are focusing on, on the multiple wins from agriculture. Um, and as I said, I think that should very much be continued as, as farmers not only deliver on adaptation or mitigation, but also on food security and world development and poverty eradication and development in general. So that is the most important focus area that we should keep focusing on for farmers. Thank you very much. Thank you.